Greetings from Arizona. This is Tony Kuiper. I'm happy to announce that the TK9 plugin for Photoshop is now available. It's the successor to the TK8 panel and is improved in many ways. However, anyone currently using TK8 will still find TK9 to be familiar territory. All the TK8 modules are still here, but they have been improved, expanded, and many new features, including new modules, have been added. In this video, I'll provide a quick peek at some of the new stuff you'll see in TK9. I'll start off here on the Combo and CX modules. These modules perform many common Photoshop functions and run some useful and creative actions. Both panels do the same things. They just have different layouts, so you can decide what works best in your workspace. I'll focus on the combo module. At the top is a new color overlay toggle, so you can see, in a color of your choice, what is being revealed on the active layer through a layer mask or blend if settings. At the bottom is a new before and after toggle button to easily compare the current state of the image with how it started when first opened in Photoshop. This button is a new layer mask calculator that opens a new interface where you can add, subtract, and intersect the layer mask on the active layer with masks saved on the channels panel or an active selection. This new interface can also be used to apply channels as layer masks, to load channels as selections, and even to delete channels. Select Subject and Select Sky have also both been updated. You can now double click either to select the inverse. For example, you can single click the Select Sky button to select the sky or double click it to select the foreground. These buttons can also be used to save your selection as a mask on the channels panel. The Free Transform button is now multifunctional. In addition to Free Transform, it can now also be used to access Perspective Warp and the Liquify filter. And finally, Delete and Fill have been added as the preferred alternative on the Content Aware Fill button. If you've not tried Delete and Fill, I'll link to a video about it in the description below. Before moving on, I want to first mention that all modules now have a flyout menu for accessing user preferences. It's opened with this menu button in the upper right corner. Language choice is accessed here, along with module specific options, information on how to access tooltips, and resource materials. Additionally, this menu provides access to the new Backup and Restore feature programmed into each module. It's now easy to back up all your user settings and then restore them if you have a computer crash. Backup and Restore can also be used to transfer your TK9 settings from one computer to another. Okay, let's take a look at the My Actions module, which lets you create a personalized custom panel based on your Photoshop actions. There are two big changes here. The first is that adding actions to or removing them from the Actions list starts in the Flyout menu. The Add and Subtract buttons have been removed from the main interface. The entire panel is now devoted to displaying the list of actions you use most. The other big change is that there are now a total of five modules for creating action lists. My Actions, and then additional tabs simply called 1, 2, 3, and 4 that work exactly the same way. So, now you can create action lists customized for specific workflows, and then just open the tab of the module that matches the action list you need to use. The Multimask module remains the star in the TK9 lineup and probably has the lion's share of new features. From the main interface, users can still make luminosity masks, zone masks, color masks, edge masks, and saturation and vibrance masks. However, there are now new mask making possibilities. Focus masks, 
and blend if masks. I'll take a closer look at the blend if masks shortly. Also on the main interface is a larger array of adjustment layers that can be quickly created if you have this module open. And there's also now a green button for accessing the new Edit Blend If feature, and I'll show you this in more detail a little later also. First though, I want to show you some new features when making masks. Luminosity masks are accessed with this button, and it opens a standard mask making interface. Here, there is now a new option to use a black and white adjustment layer when creating a luminosity mask. This allows for making luminosity masks based on both image brightness and image color at the same time. At the top you'll find a toggle button for creating a gradient overlay on the image. Once in place, this overlay shows which tones on the tonal spectrum are being selected by a particular luminosity mask. The Modify section has also been updated. There is a new Fill option for quickly filling a selected area of the mask with black or white paint. A new Modify submenu is also now available and opened with this button. This submenu provides access to the new Burn, Dodge, and Blur options that work as your mask is being created. Finally, in the output section, there is a new folder button that outputs a new group layer with your on-screen mask as the layer mask. You can then add adjustment layers to this group and have the group's mask control how these adjustments affect the image. Okay, let's talk Blend If now since Blend If takes on a whole new role in TK9. TK9's Blend If functionality interacts with Photoshop's layer style dialog shown here. TK9 Blend If Masks are gray channel masks for the underlying layer, which means they are essentially luminosity masks for the current state of the image. Back on the main interface, this button in the top row opens a new interface for making Blend If Masks, and it looks like this. At the top are presets for luminosity and zone masks. These presets set the Blend If sliders below and in Photoshop's Layer Style dialog to match the preset. Users can then adjust the sliders to fine-tune the mask. Additional fine-tuning is possible using any of the features in the Modify section. And when it comes time to output the mask, all the options in the Output section are also still available. This means that Blend If Masks can be deployed as a layer mask, as a selection, or even as actual blend if settings that match what's on the sliders. So, blend if masks allow users to see their blend if settings before using them and then provide deployment options that are not possible from Photoshop's layer style interface. But making blend if masks is just the beginning of what TK9 can do with regard to blend if. Back on the main interface, there is also access to the Edit Blend If function with this button. It again opens a new interface which lets users directly affect what gets revealed on the current layer by adjusting the layer's Blend If settings or adding Blend If settings to the layer if none exist. The top part is very similar to the interface for making Blend If masks and adjusts the gray channel. These preset buttons allow you to quickly create blend if settings for the layer that match luminosity and zone masks. In this way, Edit Blend If is like adding or editing a luminosity layer mask that controls what is revealed on the layer. The preset settings show up on the sliders underneath, which can be further adjusted based on how the image looks. Below the sliders are buttons for additional presets for no darks, no midtones, and no lights. These can be used for removing specific tonal ranges from receiving an adjustment. At the bottom of the interface are options for working with blend if color channels, red, green, and blue, and by extension cyan, magenta, and yellow. You can target an adjustment to specific colors, or you can exclude an adjustment from specific colors. You get to choose the colors using these checkboxes. 
and the color expansion slider allows for additional control as to how much or how little the chosen colors are affected. Finally, there is even an option to save and reuse BlendIF settings via this button, which again opens a new interface. Let's go back to the main interface to briefly look at a couple of other new features. First, workflow extras are accessed with this button. And this section now includes lots of new actions. Of particular note is the guided frequency separation buttons at the bottom. This will make frequency separation easier to use since the panel does all the work in selecting the correct Photoshop tool and correct layer. It's also non-destructive in that it's now possible to restore both color and texture that have previously been altered using frequency separation. The last major update accessed from the main interface is color grading via this button. One change you'll notice here is that the pucks on the color wheel are now round with transparent centers. And instead of drag and drop, you now just click on the color wheel to move the pucks to where they'll best serve your color grading needs. The color grading interface also has several other new features. The sample to set button lets you sample a color with the color picker and immediately color grade a chosen total range to match it. There are readouts of hue, saturation, and brightness in the lower left corner below the color wheel. And there are color hex codes in the lower right for copying and inputting hex codes for color grading. And just like with BlendIF, you can now save your color grades using this button. It opens a new interface where you can select a color grade from the list and even compare different color grades that you've saved on the list. Okay, this has only been a partial list of the new features in the Multimask module. There's a lot left to explore and I'll post links to more videos from my affiliates in the description below. Last, but certainly not least, TK9 now includes the new export module. This allows for resizing and sharpening images for the web plus a whole lot more. Users can create an unlimited number of presets. They can also choose what gets processed, including entire folders of images. There are settings to resize and name the sharpened image. There are options for cropping the image in various ways. Actions can be run after resizing to do things like adding a custom frame. Different watermarks can be added as part of processing. And processed images can be saved in a designated folder in various formats. The export module is included with the other TK9 modules and there is no extra charge for it. Okay, I think that's about enough for now. If you're already a TK8 user, I'm sure you'll find TK9 to be a huge upgrade that's loaded with many new possibilities. If you're a new user, TK9 will provide tons of new ways to interact with Photoshop and spark your creativity. Either way, I hope you'll try the TK9 plugin for Photoshop and see what it can do for your images. This is Tony Kuiper. As always, best wishes for good light.